Yo, what's going on guys? Matt here and welcome back to another video and today I have something different for you guys. I am going to be starting my 2015 through 16 NHL division previews. Now basically it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to be going through all four divisions in the NHL, the Pacific, the Central, the Metropolitan, and the Atlantic and going through each team, their MVP of last season, how they finished last season, their notable off-season additions, and also where I expect them to finish at the end of this upcoming season and before we start do want to let you guys know that this is just these are my opinions these are not your opinions they're mine feel free to leave your opinion in the comment section below and yeah without further ado let's go ahead and get started okay so first up in the 2015 through 16 NHL division previews we have the Anaheim Ducks in the Pacific Division now Anaheim really did well last year they really did well finished first in the Pacific Division they made it all the way to the conference finals in the Western Conference, only losing to Chicago in game number seven. So they were a game away from the Stanley Cup finals. So it was not really a bad season for them. Obviously, they probably wanted to get to the finals. But when you're facing a team like Chicago, it's really hard to, especially um, in the playoffs. But they did get to game seven. Their MVP last year, I have to say, was probably Corey Perry. He had a very good season and overall just led their team um, in a lot of areas and also help them in the playoffs. Um, in the offseason, they really did not need to do much. Like I said, they finished in first place. They had a very good team. It was not a fluke. They deserved to finish first. And they added Kevin Bieksa and Carl Hagelin. Now, Kevin Bieksa, they got him from Vancouver, is really going to help solidify their D. It was already pretty good, but, you know, now it's going to be better. And he's just a great addition to their team. And they also got Carl Hagelin from that Emerson Edom trade with New York. Um, yeah, they did have to give up Edom, but also Carl Haglund's a middle six forward for the Ducks. He can definitely add some speed, and um, not that they needed that absolutely, but it's always nice to have it. So uh, my project projection for them to finish next year is first place in the Pacific Division. I just feel like they, honestly, if they didn't add anything, I feel like they would still finish first. But they added more Carl Haglund and Kevin Bieksa, and I figure... That's with those guys, they just have to do better, and I think they will. Um, Frederick Anderson in net last year played very well, especially in the playoffs. He's definitely their starter. I know they have Gibson, but I think they're just going to go with Anderson here. They got a good coach with Bruce Boudreaux behind the bench. And overall, I think this team, like I said, didn't need to do much to finish first again this next coming season. Um, but they did add some more, and they will finish first, pretty sure. And um, it's really going to be exciting to see how the Ducks do next year. Okay, moving on. Next on the list, we have the Arizona Coyotes. And last year, it was definitely a season to forget for them as they finished last in the Pacific Division and entered themselves into a full-on rebuild mode. Their MVP I picked was Oliver ekman Larson. He is a good player, don't get me wrong, but um, he is a defenseman. He doesn't put up too much, too much points. And with the lack of talent on that team, it wasn't too hard for him to wrap up that award. Um, but... They definitely um, need to change some things. In the offseason, they brought back Antoine Vermette. He went over to Chicago on the or at the trade deadline. Won a cup with them, and now he's back, so that's good. I'm sure he's glad to be back there. And they also drafted Dylan Strom. The only reason I put this is because he is a, potentially a good impact player. The only thing is, I don't think he's going to be with this team this next season. So yes, he was an offseason addition technically with the draft, but I don't think you're going to be seeing him in an Arizona Coyote next year. Maybe towards the end if their team starts to do bad but at the same time I don't know why they throw them in there so I think you're going to see a lot of development from their prospects next year they do have Max Domi they also have Anthony Duclair from that trade last year with the Rangers sending over the um, Keith Yandel the defenseman and I just think that right now they are looking at the prospects they were in the lottery the second worst team in the league Obviously, they lost it in the draft, so they did have a chance to get Connor McDavid. They did not, uh, but I do pro project them to finish last again in the Pacific Division. I just think that most of the teams, actually all the teams, um, pretty much got a little bit better at least. And the Coyotes, uh, maybe their farm system got better, but not much of their NHL team. So really, um, I don't think there's high expectations at all this year for the Arizona Coyotes. I expect them to finish last. I expect them to have a pretty high draft pick and a chance at Austin Matthews in next year's draft. And it's going to be another season to forget in Arizona. Moving on forward, we have the surprising Calgary Flames. Wow, what a season it was for them. Really did not expect them to make the playoffs or come anywhere close to doing so. I'm sure a lot of people could agree with me, but they had other plans. They really stepped their game up 
They had a really good farm system, but then again, they just really just called up all their prospects. Or not all of them, but some of them. And um, it really, really paid off. It really helped their team. And honestly, I, I am very surprised they made the playoffs. And they did well. They upset their Canadian rivals, the Vancouver Canucks, in the first round. And they... I guess scared the Ducks a little bit, even though they lost in five. They had a couple of close games and um, played pretty well. So I really did not expect that. This year, however, I am expecting bigger things. First of all, their MVP last year in the 2014-15 season were all their rookies. I would have said Mark Giordano, um, but he did get injured later in the season. And when it was time for them to step up big, the rookies I'm talking about, and help them get to the playoffs, they did just that. Johnny Gaudreau, Sean Monaghan, even Sam Bennett, when he um, came up later in the season, he played a big role, and it, it really helped them. It really did. And it got them to the playoffs, like I said, did well in the playoffs. Um, honestly, I, I think that they're going to do good next season. Again, I could be wrong because a lot of people thought the Colorado Avalanche, after having a similar season to this um, uh, two seasons ago, would have done well last season, but they didn't. They missed the playoffs. So I don't know. Maybe the Calgary Flames will have the same type of thing, missed the playoffs. Maybe the season was just luck, but I don't know. I feel like it's not. I feel like it's different than the Colorado Avalanche. I feel like these rookies are not obviously rookies anymore, and they're going to play even better. They did add Dougie Hamilton in the offseason from Boston. That was huge. Their defense now is looking very, very good. Um, and I actually projected them to finish behind the Anaheim Ducks at second place in the Pacific Division. I just think that, like I said, they have a little bit of a different feel from the Colorado Avalanche team from two seasons, seasons ago. I feel like they just got better defensively by adding Dougie, Dougie Hamilton. The only really question I have is goaltending. Um, Jonas Hiller, I, I guess they're going to rely on him. They also have Kari Ramo, but are they going to be able to establish a number one goaltender or are they maybe going to have to go out and get one? So we'll see. Otherwise, though, I think it's going to be a good season in Calgary. I think they are going to make the playoffs finish second behind the Anaheim Ducks in the Pacific, and they will hopefully, for their fan base, go far in the playoffs. Next up, we have the Edmonton Oilers. Interesting season from them. It wasn't that great. A lot of people uh, maybe thought they'd get a little better, but they, they didn't. Uh, maybe you could argue that they didn't get any worse, but they were still pretty bad. They finished sixth in the Pacific Division, only ahead of the Arizona Coyotes, and it was definitely a season to forget in Edmonton. Their MVP, and I do not mean this as a joke, I really don't, was nobody. Um, there was literally no one on this team that stood out to me that played well or even had some improvement. I, I, I honestly could not pick out one player because there were none, and that is not a joke. This team was in need of some serious help, and the offseason was probably one of the best offseasons the Oilers have had in a long time. First off, Beyond all things, they won the draft lottery. They selected Connor McDavid with the first overall pick. This is huge. If they didn't add anyone else, only adding Connor McDavid would significantly help their team. He is definitely right away a top six forward. Obviously, his potential is a top line, first line, elite forward. But right away, he's going to be a top six forward. He's definitely making this roster from day one. You can already see it in the rookie training camp. Um... He's going to be a great, great addition to this team. He's really going to help them out right off the bat. Sidney Crosby-like, we'll see though. And they also added Cam Talbot. This is a very good goaltender, um, or at least what we saw from the sample size in New York when Lundqvist was injured for the Rangers. He came in, played well, and the Oilers believe that he can convert into a full-time starting number one goaltender. We'll see. I think that he can do well, but again, it was off a small sample size that we saw, so we will never know. But they also added Tom McClellan. I only put two people on here, but you can also add some more. Tom McClellan, their coach, coming over from San Jose. He's a very good coach. He definitely is something that the Oilers needed. They had not had a really good coach for a while now. He is going to have some structure to this team. They are going to a specific direction. And also, they added Griffin Reinhardt from the New York Islanders. Going to help their defense out. So, a really good offseason for the Oilers. I see them finishing in the same spot as last year, but don't take this the wrong way. I definitely see some significant improvement from them. I think that with all their pieces in play, if players around them can play better, maybe add a few minor pieces for depth, um, then they'll finish good. Although the only reason I don't think they're going to finish higher is because a lot of the other teams in the Pacific Division have gotten better. Pretty much everyone but Arizona, I think, has gotten better. And it's going to be tough to jump. So I think that they are definitely going to play well. I think that the Pacific Division, though, this year is going to be a little tougher than last year. And I think that they will finish 
better with a better record, but in the same spot as they were last year at number six. Um, but I do think that they will finish outside of the top 10 for the draft next year. I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but I think they will have um, a 11 through 15 pick when it comes to the draft. Next up on the list, we have the Los Angeles Kings. What a weird season for them. Became the first team, I believe, since the Carolina Hurricanes in 06 to miss the playoffs after winning the Stanley Cup the season before. And they did not make the playoffs, obviously. They finished fourth in the, in the division, but uh, didn't get the wildcard spot as both the wildcard teams came out of the Central Division. And honestly, uh, some of their players, some of their big players, Anze Kobotar played decent. Jonathan Quick played oh, pretty good, I guess, decent. Um, for him, probably just decent. Um, Drew Doughty played probably the best out of all of them. I think he was just their um, defensive MVP and overall team MVP last year. But um, a lot of their players that they relied on in the last couple of years with their success did not play all that well last year. And I think that's what led to them not making the playoffs. They didn't play too well. And they finished with a pretty good pick in the draft. But they did not get it as they traded that away for Milan Lucic. Uh, they traded Martin Jones and a first round pick to the Bruins for Milan Lucic. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of questioning this. I really am. I feel like they could have gotten a better player than Milan, Milan Lucic in the draft. Um, but obviously, they didn't feel that way. They felt like maybe they weren't going to get as good of a player. They felt like Milan Lucic was a good fit for their team. He's kind of that hard, gritty, grinding forward that can score some goals every now and then for the Kings. Um, I guess even more than even now and then. But I really, from my point of view, I, I'm kind of questioned by this move. I feel like they should have took the pick in the draft instead of getting Milan Lucic. But you know what you're going to get out of Lucic, and you may not know what you're going to get out of that pick. So I guess that's what they thought. They give up that first round pick, get Lucic. Like I said, he's going to add some grit to their team. Maybe that's what they want. Um, here's the thing. I don't see them finishing worse than last year. I actually think they're going to finish a little better. But I think um, other teams around them, particularly San Jose, um, I feel like they're going to finish a little better than the Kings. So I think the Kings standings wise are going to move down to the fifth spot in the division. But I still think they could make the wild card. I think that the Sharks and the Kings could both make the wild card. Um, I, again, I think they're going to finish better record wise next year. But I think, like I said, with the Oilers, the Pacific Division is getting better and it is going to be tougher. So I think the Kings do move down a spot in the standings, but are better record wise than they were last year. And I still think they have a good chance to make the playoffs as a wild card team. Heck, maybe they can even surprise everyone like they have in years past and make it as a top three team in the Pacific Division. But only time will tell. And I think that the Kings will finish better and possibly make the playoffs next season. Okay, next up on the list, we have the San Jose Sharks. Now, last season, for the first time in the last 10 seasons, they did not make the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is a very weird season for them. They, like I said, didn't make the playoffs, had a lot of chaos. They didn't have a captain. Not a lot of players played well. They finished fifth in the Pacific Division, and they definitely um, are looking to get better next season. For the last three seasons, though, I think they've been secretly retooling. They've been getting younger. They sold off some veterans to get some draft picks, which they got. They had a very good draft. I don't think any of their players from this year's draft will make the roster this year, maybe next year. But um, MVP of last season, I have to go with Joe Pavelski. I'll be the first to admit they, they did not have many players that played well last year. They had a lot of underperformances from a lot of players. Joe Pavelski, though, played pretty much up to his standards. Uh, he played very well, had a lot of points, had a lot of goals, and as usual, helped this team win when they did. Um, but again, they're going to need more than him. Um, this offseason, though, they did pretty well, I think. Um, first of all, their goaltender, Antti Niemi, left for the Dallas Stars, and that left a spot for the number one goaltender. Some thought it would be Alex Stalock, their backup. But they go ahead and trade their first overall pick next year in the 2016 draft for Martin Jones. This was to the Boston Bruins. Um, similar to the Cam, Cam Talbot situation in Edmonton, don't know how good Jones is going to be. A lot of people think he's going to be good, but you don't know because he only had a small sample size, similar to Talbot last year with the Rangers. Two years ago with the Kings when Quick was injured, Martin Jones played extremely well. So if he can turn out, be a good number one for the Sharks. They are back in business. Um, not paying him too much, but they did have to give up a lot for him. So if he plays well, it'll pay off. They'll have a very good young goaltender. Um, but if it doesn't, they're going to be questioning with the goaltending this year. Um, next up, Joel Ward. He's a good, um, I wouldn't say depth, but he's a good middle six forward. They can play um, in a lot of places for the Sharks. He's good. 
E is a veteran. They were trying to get younger, but they did add two veterans, which is something you need even when you're trying to get younger. I think they all have their they have all their young pieces in that they want. So now they're just kind of filling them in with some veterans that can do well, including Paul Martin, the defenseman. Many think that he can play with Brent Burns as a pair on the defense, but um, you never know. So I think the Sharks offseason was pretty well. I think they finished ahead of the Kings in the standings by one spot. I think them and the Kings flip-flop. I think they'll finish fourth. Uh, with a better record than last year. This doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make the playoffs, though, as the Central Division has a lot of good teams. Um, but obviously, if they're finishing fourth, they're looking for a wild card spot. Who knows? Maybe they could finish again in the top 10 for the draft next year. Um, they wouldn't be able to do that, though, because they sold their pick to the Boston Bruins. But um, they could also do better than some people expect. I expect them to at least be competitive for the playoffs a little bit more than last year. If they win more at home, they'll do better. But overall, I think this season is going to be an improvement for the Sharks. They have a chance of making it as a wild card team as they had a pretty good off season. Last and certainly not least, we have the Vancouver Canucks. Now the season before, they didn't do too well. They missed the playoffs and had to do a little bit of a rebuild slash retool. And it honestly worked pretty well. They made the playoffs. They made it to second place in the Pacific Division at the end of the year, ahead of the Flames. They did lose to the Flames in the first round, but they still made it to the playoffs, and I think that's what they wanted to do. They added goaltender Ryan Miller. He's going to be the starting goaltender now that Eddie Lack is no longer there, and their MVP last season for me was Radim Rubata. I think that he played the best out of all of them and um, helped their team out, helped them reach the playoffs, and they also had a good draft the year before, too. So they made the playoffs, and... They had a decent offseason. Um, they didn't need to do too much because I think they have a pretty good team, good enough to get to the playoffs at least. Uh, maybe if you're a Canucks fan, you wanted them to add a little bit more, um, maybe not depth, but just more um, skill, maybe just more goals for that team offensively to get them for maybe even some more defense after losing Kevin Bieksa. But they did only really get one thing, and that was Brandon Sutter from the Pittsburgh Penguins after trading Nick Bonino. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how he does. I was kind of questioned by that trade. I didn't know what to think of it. I don't know who really won in that trade, but we'll see. Next year will obviously tell us. Um, but I think that they're going to finish pretty much in the same spot as they did last year, maybe a spot lower. I had them at third in the Pacific Division, just below the Flames. Um, I think that they're going to make the playoffs. Um, maybe, who knows, maybe they'll do bad. Maybe they'll do better. I don't know. Maybe one of the California teams like the Kings and the Sharks can make the top three and they'll be bumped down to a wild card spot. But you never know. Um, they have now a number one starting goaltender for sure, Ryan Miller. It should have been... That like that the whole year, but then in the playoffs, Eddie Lack played a little bit, and many questioned him, but he's gone now. He's with Carolina. So they have goaltender. Maybe they should have added some defense. They added Brandon Sutter in the offseason, and really, I feel like they're going to do pretty much the same as last season. Pretty good. They're going to make the playoffs, and we'll see how they do. Again, only next season will tell what's going to happen for the Vancouver Canucks. Okay, so that is going to do it for the Pacific Division preview for the NHL 2015 through 16 season. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm trying to keep these videos less than 20 minutes long. It's a little under 19 minutes currently, but we will see. Um, basically, I'm just going to be going after this division, going to the Central Division, then the Metropolitan, then the Atlantic, going through all four divisions, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope that I do well. I did well with my NHL playoff predictions, and um, hopefully I can do well with these. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or your opinion on what you think I should have said about your team if I went over it today, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I will definitely reply. And um, gosh, good luck to your team. And next episode, you guys will see the Central Division. Peace.